This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to build your online presence. In 2019, the vehicle carrier Golden Ray capsized in St. Simon's Sound while outbound from the port of Brunswick in Georgia. While the crew believed they were seaworthy, in reality there had been a simple typo when entering figures in the ship's stability computer, resulting in the total loss of the vessel and cargo and over $250 million of salvage costs. So what really happened? The Golden Ray was a 656 foot or 200 meter long row row vehicle carrier with a displacement of 71,178 metric tons. She had a total of 15 decks, 13 of which were used to house her cargo of up to 7,742 vehicles. On the 30th of August 2019, she departed Freeport in Texas en route to Brunswick in Georgia. Shortly after departure, however, the crew received notification of Hurricane Dorian, which was heading across the Caribbean towards Florida. In preparation for the heavy weather, they loaded an additional 1,500 tonnes of seawater ballast into double bottom tanks 5 port and starboard, 5 centre and 6 centre. Adding weight low down like this makes a ship more stable and more capable of handling rough weather. From the 1st until the 3rd of September, Golden Ray waited off Key West for Dorian to pass through. The master then received new orders to go to Jacksonville before Brunswick, so the crew created a new passage plan and they set off. The thing is, Jacksonville has a draft limitation, so in order to actually get in, they had to pump out the 1500 tons of water that they'd just loaded for the storm. With that complete, they got into Jacksonville, completed their cargo operations and then departed on the 7th of September, bound for Brunswick. Later that afternoon, they arrived and manoeuvred safely to their berth at Colonel's Island Terminal docking at 1736. Throughout the evening, they unloaded 319 tonnes of vehicles and they loaded an additional 692. By the time they finished at 23.30, they'd increased their total cargo by 94 vehicles or 373 tonnes. To calculate departure stability, the crew checked the vessel's draft and sounded ballast, fuel and freshwater tanks to manually confirm the readings from the IMAX. IMAX is the integrated monitoring alarm and control system and gives digital readings of the ship's tank levels and things like that. The chief officer then manually entered all the data into the ship's loading computer to calculate the centre of gravity and work out if the ship was safe to sail. The computer gave a positive result so the ship's GM of 2.45 metres was passed to the master along with the drafts. Now, there are additional stability requirements, but the GM is a good starting point because it measures the distance between the ship's centre of gravity and the metacenter. This is just the point at which the force of buoyancy acts through the centre line at small angles of heel. The higher the GM, the greater the writing force and the more stable the ship. Anyway, the crew determined that Golden Ray passed all its stability requirements, so at 1am on the 8th of September, she departed her berth assisted by a harbour tug. Eight minutes later, she passed under Sydney Lanier Bridge where the tug was stood down to wait for an inbound vessel. At around the same time, the master ordered the port pilot door to be opened in anticipation of disembarking the pilot later on. At 1.22, at a speed of 11.6 knots, Golden Ray altered course by 38 degrees to enter Cedar Hammock Range. Due to the turn, she heeled approximately 4 degrees to starboard before returning upright when she steadied up. It's completely normal for a vessel to heel while turning. Basically, the water creates resistance on the bottom of the hull while the centre of gravity experiences a centrifugal force pushing it out. The result is that the vessel leans when turning. The leaning is countered by the writing force created by the ship's GM. Anyway, everything went smoothly for the turn into Cedar Hammock range, so a few minutes later at 1.28, Golden Ray altered course again by 38 degrees to enter Jekyll Island range. As per routine, she was increasing speed all the time, so this time she healed a bit more, approximately 6 degrees to starboard. Again, that's pretty normal and she happily returned upright when settled on her new course of 037 degrees, continuing to increase speed. At 136, they initiated the 68 degree turn to starboard with incremental rudder movements. Starboard 10, starboard 20, midships. The ship took off, accelerating through the turn, leaning further and further to port the whole time. The pilot exclaimed, what's the GM on this thing? Before attempting to counter the heel with port rudder. It didn't work. A few minutes later at 1.40, Golden Ray grounded outside the channel southeast of Boy 19, listing 60 degrees to port. Immediately they called for help, summoning as many tugs as they could and calling the Coast Guard. Their original tug quickly responded and was joined by another from the same company. 
Together, they stabilise the Golden Ray, pushing her into the bank so that she wouldn't slip into deeper water and block the channel. The next to arrive was a couple of pilot boats who were able to assess the vessel from the outside and report to the bridge. Soon after, Coast Guard vessels and a helicopter joined the rescue and were able to evacuate most of the crew from the stricken ship. It wasn't until the next day that they rescued the rest of the crew, when teams drilled holes through the hull to get them out. Before we look at what went wrong, let me take a moment to tell you about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows you to build a beautiful online presence to run your business. The big advantage of a platform like Squarespace is simplicity and speed. It took me less than one hour to get this site up and running, thanks to their templates and intuitive page builder. Of course, I've included social media with links to my YouTube channel and a gallery view of some of my most relevant videos. But Squarespace is capable of so much more. You might want to use some of their other features such as membership areas, email campaigns, donations, or even just the blogging tools and powerful analytics. You simply select a template that vaguely resembles what you need and then customise it as you wish. It's really simple to add new elements or pages like these contact forms, galleries or appointments. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash nav to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So back to the Golden Ray where we just found out that everyone is safe so attention can turn to salvaging the ship and trying to work out what happened. Investigators removed the ship's VDR, IMAX and stability computer to try and get as much information as they could. Simulations proved that while the crew believed their GM was approximately 2.5 metres, in reality it was somewhere between 0.8 and 1.8. The centre of gravity was higher than they believed, meaning that the ship was less capable of righting herself when experiencing external forces, such as those during a turn. To understand a little deeper, we can dive into this graph, a GZ curve. On the left hand side, we have the writing lever, essentially how much force is trying to right the ship. And along the bottom we've got the angle of heel. As a ship leans further over, the writing force increases, then reduces but remains positive, right the way up to the point known as the angle of vanishing stability. If the ship leans over this far, there is no longer a writing force generated and she'll definitely capsize. Now, do you remember that number we've been talking about all along, the GM? You can read the GM from one of these graphs by measuring the slope at small angles of heel. The lower the GM, the shallower the slope. If we assume this graph illustrates a GM of 2.5 metres, like the crew thought they had, we can see the effect if we reduce it down to where the GM actually was. It is immediately obvious that at every angle of heel, there is much less force trying to right the ship. Not only that, but the angle of vanishing stability is much lower than it was before. And it gets worse. Remember when the Golden Ray was passing under the Sydney Lanier Bridge and the crew prepared the pilot ladder? Well, that involved opening one of the ship's shell doors, creating a hole in the hull on the port side. All those stability graphs that we just saw assume that the hull remains intact and no extra water gets in. With the pilot door open, once Golden Ray reached an angle of 17 degrees, water could rush in through the open door, collect on the low side and accelerate a capsize. Had that door been closed, she would have been watertight until approximately 83 degrees instead. So, why was the real stability so different from what the crew thought? When investigators plugged in the precise numbers to an identical loading computer, it correctly told them the vessel was not okay, meaning it should never have left the berth. To bring the ship into compliance, you would need to add an additional 1,492 tonnes of seawater ballast. Does that sound familiar? Remember when the ship was on passage a few days prior, they loaded 1500 tonnes of ballast to prepare for Hurricane Dorian, before pumping it out again a few days later when their destination was changed to Jacksonville. With the stability computer in manual, someone would have had to manually remove that ballast from the calculations as well. If that had have been left in, the crew would have believed that their ship was far more stable than it was. It is possible that a small clerical error could have resulted in the loss of a $62.5 million ship, $142 million worth of cargo, and cost over $250 million in salvage expenses. And that brings us to the end of today's video, which was based on the actual accident report from the NTSB. I've linked it down in the description below, so be sure to go and check that out if you want to read into this further. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.